you're 25 or 26 when you probably make this mental leap to saying, I want to be a SWAT officer. Mm. How you're 26 years old. I'll just say 26. What kind of cojones do you have to even have that as a goal? And it, it had to seem crazy to some of your peers, like the people you were around at 26, I'm going to guess aren't the same people you were around when you made it at 28. No, no, absolutely not. You know, you're the one who's famous for saying you got your list of rules behind you. You got to audit your network. And that goes yeah. for more than just real estate investing. And that's just an overall life lesson. Yeah. If you're not around people who support you, you got to audit them. Or sometimes you just have to not talk to them. I'll tell you, my grandma did not like the idea of me becoming a cop or SWAT officer. She's like, that's too dangerous. And yeah. you obviously are not kicking grandma out of your life, but you just have to know who you can have those conversations with because it's just too stressful for them. Uh, the more we talk about this, it's, not, it's a little uncomfortable for me to talk about myself because I just am not used to going this deep. Um, it, it makes me sad to realize how much of my life's kind of been motivated by pain and trauma, but what made me want to be a police officer. <laughs> it's, it's fuel, it's man. True. It's fuel. It's fuel. What made me want to be a cop, what made me specifically want to be on the SWAT team was I had a very dear friend of mine who was tragically murdered and she, she was killed by her husband. And um, I recognized that because I didn't know enough about how to see the signs of domestic violence as they were occurring in a relationship, all the little tells, all the little cues, the little, the broken phone, the having to rush home early because they didn't want to get in trouble. All these little markers that you grow to understand as you get older, and especially as you become a police officer and deal with it all the time, because I didn't see those things. I never said anything to her. I never paid attention and said, hey, maybe you're in a bad situation. So she was killed. And to this day, I feel like if I had just known then at 23, what I know now at 33 almost, maybe she would still be here. And I wanted to become a SWAT officer specifically because when you become a police officer, you realize that even though you're in a lot of dangerous situations, you get an opportunity to help people. A lot, a lot of the times, the most dangerous situations where the most action is, where the most, where the most help is needed. Regular police are kind of standing back, holding perimeter and containment. It's the SWAT officers that go in there and save a life, rescue a hostage, um, and do the very difficult work. And so wanting to make sure that people like the man who killed her get arrested and go to jail, that's done now by me. And I enjoy it very much. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that story. That has to be uh, a painful memory to kind of keep out there. But it also serves as fuel so that you can save the next person and the next person uh, for that. But yeah, back to your kind of point about rules. I haven't talked about them in a while, but yeah, these ORAT rules, number seven, audit your personal network. Are they helping or hurting you? 